Bill Hurd from Hackaday. Today I've done a small circuit board that is an analog amplifier, a little bit of filtering, a little bit of enveloping or, or signal detection that allows me to detect the, the voltages induced by the muscles, like moving the muscles in your arms. I thought to do this after the uh, Disrupt New York event, uh, which was uh, Hackaday was there. We were one of the sponsors. We had a hardware contest. And a couple of the people sitting at our table uh, we're doing things with uh, SEMG, uh, surface electromyography, surface electromyography, let's see, you say that. Um, and and uh, uh, so I got inspired to make one here. So as I said, at the table with us at the Disrupt New York, the hackathon, uh, the 24-hour event where we hacked some hardware and gave away prizes and things uh, May of this year, uh, a guy named Andrew Ipoletti had a little kit he had built where he was flexus muscles and he had a little processor, so he was interpreting it. He could turn an LED on on the first flex, turn it off, or or do several different things. And we were talking about making a thing, you know, prosthetic uh, uh, during the 24 hours for my finger. Didn't happen. Uh, then there is David Nyam who has a uh, has a project up in the Hackaday.io uh, for SEMG, the Surface Electromyography. Uh, where he, you know, basically he's got a bar graph. He wears it around or uh, with him during this event, so he could see how he was, how much his muscle was using by a bar graph going up and down. Uh, and, and so uh, those two things right there at the table, I was like, well, I should build one of these when uh, I get some time. So here it is. Let me show you the uh, the block diagram of the circuit we're talking about, and we'll go from there. All right, here's a block diagram of the circuit with our shown hooked to our little hacker dude here. And it starts with an instrumentation amplifier, and we've already talked about those. The instrumentation amplifier has high impedance on both inputs, and then it will give you the difference between these two inputs. So that's not just an op amp. Op amps usually have a high impedance input and are not so high impedance due to the resistor networks. Um, uh, instrumentation amplifiers, this happens to be an AD623, analog devices. Uh, I use it because it's in a dip form still. Uh, we can set the resistance with a single resistor. In my case, I used two, and I tapped in the middle of those. And I took that, and I used it to create a ground signal back to here. I did that so that as voltages accumulated on your body, and these are called common mode because it'd be common to both of these signals. They would go up and down with 60 cycles, things like that. But if we're only looking at the difference, in theory, we can get away with just you know living with that common mode noise. Going through a low-pass filter to the body, the idea that inverts it, the idea is if as the noise comes in, we change the potential on the body as measured. And in the end, I didn't need this. I just used ground wire, okay? <laughs> but, but it was a nice idea. So next, coming out of our instrumentation amp, and again, somewhere between 2.5 and, and 5, I was mucking with it. I forgot where I left it set. Uh, we go through a bandpass filter, and it's bandpass because there's two elements here. Remember a capacitor. DC can't go through a capacitor. So you see it, you just automatically think high frequencies screen through it, low frequencies can't even get through it. So therefore, it's a high pass, no low frequencies, no DC. So this decouples all this drifting also. And then we see another RC network. Uh, in this case, it's to an inverting input. Again, high frequencies screen through it. So when 100% screen through, the gain drops to one. This is a low pass filter okay the dc loves to get the dc will be set by these two resistors i keep moving that sorry the dc will be set by these two resistors and the high frequency will be rolled off by this capacitor we run it through one final amplifier by the way all the the noise was great for this uh, and and maybe i'll show you one of the sources of noise i did pick up if i have time but uh, all in all, this worked pretty well. And then I took the output and I de put it into a DC. Remember we talked about perfect diodes with op amps. Well, I did a little trick there, added a capacitor and resistor on the end. And so instead of a waveform that goes like this, it gives us the envelope. So when you, instead of having a bunch of pulses and nothing, it gives you a voltage that goes like that. So we get an envelope output. Here is our circuit as I stuffed it. So we've got our analog amplifier, our instrumentation analog amplifier here, and a couple of uh, dual op-amp packages. I could have made it a, uh, a quad, but things get a little crowded sometimes. All right, here, here I'm hooked up. I'm actually back to using TENS pads. Uh, they just, they're more reusable than the little ones, and I've been sticking these on and off as I set up for the shots. I've got a ground on my body, and then I've got two just stretched across an arm, and the idea is that we're looking for the spike of, of electromotive force voltage as a muscle fires, which uh, is caused by 
uh, a potassium ion migrating down the muscle as it contracts. Uh, David Nyam has, has a great write-up on this on his hackaday.io. Uh, I'll, I'll put a link up for you. Um, where he was doing a bunch of this, but also talks about the actual muscles and the electricity. So here we go. We got a little bit of noise, but if I can contract my arms, uh, or my arm, my hand, my muscles, uh, you can see some of that. And you're not getting all the scans. There's a scan rate problem, not a problem, but it's just the reality of a, of a web-based uh, scan going here. Um, so that's in voltage. So I'm getting two, three, four volts out of just wiggling my arms here. Um, and and that's that's usable. You you can do something with that. And and you know, like I said, a little background noise. Now, when I first went to do this, I noticed some. Every time I was like leaning forward, I would get this huge 60 cycle hum going, and I thought that um, there's a loose wire or something going on. Well, it turns out it's me touching my anti-static mat. My anti-static mat ground had come off and was floating and was acting like a big antenna compared to the voltage divider of me and it. It grabbed a bunch of 60 cycle and put it on the scope here. So that's like five volts we're seeing there. So regrounding it makes it so that doesn't happen. Why do I say that? Well, analog's an interesting thing and I wasn't surprised when I saw a 60 hertz source. I was actually surprised it was so easy to troubleshoot that I noticed, hey, my hand's touching that and you know, just do common sense troubleshooting. So right there, though, we've got our electromotive force showing up on the scope. Let me see if get you. Oh, look at that. Again, it's pegging it for like five volts there. Now, I'm going to show what's called an envelope here. Hold on a second. So what I've done is I've, I've, made a, I've taken a diode and a capacitor, and I've made a bigger thing, something that catches the bigger pulse and holds it. So if you want like a, a little bar graph going off or something, this, this would be the way to grab it. You can see it's, it's filling in the grooves a little bit more. So it, it's a low-pass filter, too, if you think about it. So uh, if, if we were to only look for things crossing that middle line, you could easily detect when my muscles are firing. Here I went ahead and hooked up a little bar graph uh, display. It's an old LM3914, uh, a chip not quite as old as me, and a rather dim bar graph. And the reason is it's 30 years old, and back then they couldn't get yellow very bright. And I thought I had a bunch of new ones with red, green, and yellow laying around and can't find them. So 30-year-old bar graph, but if you watch my hand, you can see I, without any processor power or anything, just an LM3914 and some amplifiers, I can show you my muscles. So it pretty much means to me this circuit's actually working. It looks a little better than just looking at a scope and going, I think that's working. Again, SEMG or just a, a instrumentation amplifier with a little bit of filtering and a little bit of post-processing in the form of an envelope detector in this case. And by the way, those little jaggies are probably 60 cycle, just so we're clear. So uh, again, Bill heard from Hackaday, this was a little throw together circuit, but again, uh, we were there at this Disrupt New York and we got a couple and we're squeezing our arms all night long and we had neurologists swinging by to figure out where the best place on my arm to try and figure out where my missing finger would fire and it was a lot of fun. So we hope to see it th next year. Uh, I assume we're going to be doing something very similar up in New York again next year. So Bill heard from Hackaday with a small analog circuit. You all have a good holiday and we'll see you next time.